Well, today we're going to um, begin a study on the subject of fear. In the Bible, there are many different kinds of fears. Uh, a lot of the fears that uh, humans experience, a lot of them are called in the science world as phobias. But let's start with what the Bible has to say concerning fear. In Matthew chapter 10, you know what, let me just uh, open it up here and make sure I'm giving it to you in good context. Um, This, this, this lesson out of Matthew chapter 10, a large portion of this particular chapter is in red print. Mm -hmm. And it's talking about um, Jesus uh, sending out the 12, and he gave them very, very specific instructions. So for the sake of uh, our understanding, let's see what Jesus had to say about what a disciple should take with him and how he should interact. Because it leads up to the instruction regarding fear. And whether you like it or not, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you are going to run into hills, valleys, troubles, storms, mm -hmm. peaceful days, and not so peaceful days. Mm -hmm. Agreed? Agreed. So here in Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, this text in Matthew chapter 10, it says, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal, it says, to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. So he's equipping them. First thing you have to understand is that Jesus is the equipper. He uh, blesses you with power, with guidance, with gifts, with talents, and with instruction. Mm -hmm. And when you follow those or use those or are, are uh, allowing your life to be utilized by them, that's how the reflection of Christ comes about in the earth. It's because the disciplined followers reveal the glory of God. In other words, when you love someone that's not lovable, or you're loving someone that's an enemy to you in the world, that, that's so far against what the natural world uh, would, would expect from you. Mm -hmm. So he's equipping them and giving them power over evil forces. Now, what does that say? It says these forces are real, mm -hmm. and they manifest through people. Sometimes visibly and sometimes not so visibly. I mean, I, I, I've, I've walked up to a woman recently, and I was standing behind her, and she looked at me, and then this glare came in her eye, and she growled at me. I, I, I've only seen that one other time, and uh, it was the woman on the other time was full of the devil. Mm -hmm. So these spirits, they can occupy humans. Mm -hmm. We seen from the scripture that the uh, that Jesus sent them into pigs, mm -hmm. and the pigs lost their mind and ran off the side of a mountain and, and were killed. So, just a few points right out of the gate. Jesus is equipping his disciples and he gives them power. What does he give them power over? Unclean spirits. Now, what are you supposed to do with this power? The Bible says that they, they cast them out. And also, Jesus gave power to the 12 disciples to heal all kinds of sickness, all kinds of disease. Mm -hmm. Now, it goes on in verse 2. It says, Now the names of the 12 apostles are these. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, um, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and B B Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, and, uh, James, the son of Alphaeus, 
and uh, Lebeus, whose surname was Thaddeus, Simon the Canite, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. <clears throat> now, verse 5 it says, These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, So the, he's being very bold. He's not giving this as a suggestion to them. He's giving them clear direction. It says he commanded them. It says, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter into the city of the Samaritans. So who now he's defining what people they should go to and where they should not go. Okay? It says, but verse 6, but, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, now he's given really detail, lots of detail. Preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold, nor silver, nor copper in your belts, nor bag for your journey, nor tunics for your sandals, nor staff, semicolon, it says, for a worker is worthy of his food. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who, who in it is worthy, and stay there till you go out. And when you go into a house, household greet it if the household is worthy let your peace come upon it do you realize that your presence and your blessing can can change a household yeah. why because the holy spirit is on the inside of you and when you bless if you look in the old testament when the uh, the patriarchs blessed their children everything they said realized in their lives. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I say, God forbid, do not curse your children. Mm -hmm. Do not curse them. Not for any reason, do not curse them. Amen. Redirect them, discipline them, but don't let your mouth curse them. Mm -hmm. Rather, bless them. Mm -hmm. Bless them. Bless, use the power and the blessing of your authority in Jesus Christ to bring blessings to them not destruction. Amen. It says, um, and whoever, um, verse 13, if the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you, it will be more tolerable than the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Mm. Now, do you see? Mm. That's the reason the Lord instructs his children, be kind to strangers. It very well be. It could be an angel that you're unaware of. Amen. Okay. And it says in verse 16, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of, of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serp serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my name's sake as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak. What is this teaching? And what is it displaying here? Complete dependency on God because you believe in His presence in you. Amen. These are dif disciplines for first church disciples and for us. We're last day disciples. Mm -hmm. These principles will surely work for us in this age. And you cannot be independent. This is a time for the body of Christ to be dependent upon the counsel and obedient to his instructions. Mm -hmm. Because anything to the left or to the right of that will bring trouble in your house. Yeah. It says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpent, serpents and harmless as doves. 
But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils and scourge you in their synagogues. You will be brought before governors and kings for my sake, as a testimony to them and to the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, do not worry about what you will speak, for you will be given it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. It says, Now brother, now brother will deliver up his brother to death, and a father, his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. All you have to do is read any newspaper over the last 40 years, and you would agree. Right? And I don't know about the other years because I wasn't alive then. Mm-hmm. But I can tell you about what, I can, what I've seen in the past 50 for sure. Mm-hmm. It seems like, I mean, there was a time when you could let your kids outside and not worry about right. the, them being stolen or stolen for body parts. Mm-hmm. That's not the case now. Amen. It says... Verse 23, when they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For assuredly, I say to you, you will not have gone through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of of his household? Therefore, do not fear them. Today's lesson is on fear. Jesus thought it was really important that the twelve be given instruction on how to walk, what they should be doing, and what not to fear. Mm -hmm. How much more would that apply to us today when we're seeing uh, people beheaded and uh, pregnant women being gutted and shot in these terrorist videos. It's unbelievable what is happening. It's, it's barbaric, mm-hmm. to say the least. So, you know, I, I've got small, young people in my life. Y'all do too. You've got to be strong for them yeah. and tell them that these things will get worse and worse but Jesus is taking us to heaven. Amen. So let your eyes not fall prey, your heart not fall uh, within you. And let's take it to heart to obey our, our Savior, which said, do not fear them. Do not fear them. Amen. Now that's easy to say. It's easier to say if you believe you have the gift of eternal life. Because one of the fears that Jesus takes from a human is fear of death. Mm-hmm. And when, you, when you're not afraid to die, Amen. that changes everything. Yes. It changes everything. It'll change how you walk, talk, spend, live, treat, sing, mm-hmm. everything. It will change. It's that powerful. So in t- verse 26, red print. In Matthew chapter 10, 26, it says, Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed and hidden that will not be known. Verse 27, Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, and whatever you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. Verse 28, And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather, fear him, capital H, who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. 
Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. In verse 33, But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Now look at that. It's important to know him and to trust him even unto death. Do not let anyone trick you into denouncing Christ. Amen. Because even if death comes, you win. Amen. You win. And you either believe that or you don't. And if you turn with me to Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, I'd like to show you uh, what it has to say about a very different kind of fear. Uh, Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 14. It says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death. That is the devil. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. In verse 16, for indeed he does not give aid to angels, but he, he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Therefore in all things, he had to be made like his brethren. Like, it says that he might be merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. To make propitiation for the sins of the people. That in that he himself has suffered, being tempted, he's able to aid those who are tempted. Our key verse here is, is, begins in verse 14. <coughs> Our subject today is the different kinds of fears. Now, in our last look in Matthew chapter 10, we have a clear command not to fear, and we have a clear command to recognize whom we should fear. And it points in the latter, rather, to our Heavenly Father. Because he has power not only to take life out of your flesh, mm -hmm. but to, it says, send the soul into hell. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason he is to be feared. And the Lord is not a respecter of men, and he doesn't want you to be a respecter of men. Amen. We're all the same before Christ. Mm -hmm. There's no big eyes, no little use, education, earning power. None of that changes your value before God. Amen. He doesn't care where you were born or what you did for a living mm. or do for a living. It is, it is absolutely a non-issue with God. Your value is because you were made in His image. Amen. That makes you valuable. And because the life in you has come from Him. Mm. And because this birth by the Spirit allows you to have a new life in Him. Yes, yes. And the yes. presence of the Holy Spirit came to you as a gift. That makes you valuable. Because Amen. you've become a temple of the living God. Because you have become a child of the Most High God through adoption. Now you can 
easily say in truth, not in falsehood, that God is my Father. And, I, and the Bible encourages us to call him <clears throat> Abba. So fear from our Heavenly Father, would it also has a caveat, meaning that we're, we're to be awestruck by him. But you're not, you're not supposed to be in fear of punishment from him unless you're in sin. Then you should fear him. In other words, he doesn't want you to fear that if you paint your bathroom green, that God's going to hit you over the head with a baseball bat. That's not him. Mm-hmm. No, there's freedom and liberty in Jesus. Amen. God doesn't want you, he doesn't care how you paint your bathroom. You like it green, go for it. You like mm-hmm. it purple with yellow polka dots, that's all the better. But what he does want from us is for us to recognize his worth and his majesty and his greatness. And because of that, we attribute worth. And, and what I just explained to you is the biblical definition of worship. So if you, if you get a Bible dictionary, look up the word worship, and you look to underneath there for the definition, it means to attribute worth. <clears throat> And when you recognize the worth of God, mm. the testimony of God, mm. Amen. the power of God, His creation, all these things stacked on top of one another make you, there's no other response other than you're awestruck. Yes. An awestruck heart will worship well and will fear reverently. Not walking around with a pillow over your head, hoping you're going to dodge the next bullet from God. See, that's different. Now, if you're willfully sinning, then you've got chastisement coming. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Because He loves you. Yeah. Right? If you've got a child and, and they're wayward, you, you can't let them go on like that. Mm-hmm. You've got to uh, put the brakes on it so that they don't die in their sin. I, I, the, the issue with my girls, I tell them right up front, I don't care how old you are, I'm still going to exercise my authority over you when you're acting a fool. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we're grown. <laughs> I said, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not grown until you bury me. <laughs> then you're grown. So I'm sure the Lord... Feel something like that, you know. I mean, yes, yes. yeah. I, you, you know, his his word to me. Yes, sir. It's just I don't need to know anything else. You want it done? That's enough for me. Amen. Period. I, it's it's good for me, God. If you think it's good for me, I, it's really good for me. And I'll say yes, sir, and move on. Yes, amen. That's the kind of all. That's the kind of words, rather that come from an awestruck heart. And we want that. You do not... uh, Perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a time in my life because I did not know Him, I did not know the Scripture, in the beginning of my walk with Him, I had this picture of God in, in the heaven with a big baseball bat waiting to whack me. You know, on my head. You know, the big grandfather with the big baseball bat? Okay, thou not, thou shalt not do that. <laughs> I've come to know him. He, he doesn't operate like that. He lets you know. If you don't know, he'll, he'll, get, he'll get the information to you. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it's loud. Sometimes it's a still, quiet voice. Sometimes it's through a preacher, sometimes it's through a friend, sometimes it's through the Word of God, sometimes it's through a circumstance, but God speaks. Yes. yes. Primarily through His Word. Yes. Amen. And so we have to be listening in these last days. Mm-hmm. You don't want to be stubborn and, and set in your ways to where you're not trainable or teachable. Mm-hmm. You, you're, you're not in a position to be redirected. And if you look at the Israelites, that's, <clears throat> they were stubborn, they were rebellious, and they were grumblers. These things, we as children of God today, 
must not permit in our tongue. Amen. Amen. You can ask my girls, if I catch them grumbling about something, then they're going to have a bad day. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want the wrath of God to come to them. Amen. For grumbling. you got to be kidding me. You're grumbling? What? So, we have to have that awe of the Lord and, and communicate that to those that we have authority over. Our children. So let me read this again to you in verse 14. It says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same. Now what's he talking about? What what is this text talking about? The Holy Spirit is teaching us here. Okay, if you pinch yourself, you've got flesh and blood, right? Right. That's us. It says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken... Of flesh and blood. He, with a capital H, himself, with a capital H, likewise shared in the same. What's it talking about? The the incarnate truth. Mm -hmm. Christ coming through the virgin birth. Mm -hmm. God wrapping him in flesh. Allowing him to walk, talk, sleep, eat. Do all the things that he did. Yet still be God. It's teaching us that he shared in the same. It says, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. And catch this, verse 15, this is yours, this is mine. It says in verse 15, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. What bondage? The fear. Fear wraps us up in bondage. Okay? Fear wraps us up and it creates such a terrible chain that we, we're paralyzed. There, there, are, there are earthly fears that... That all, I'm sure all of us have had some, or maybe more, that where I like I I don't like to get on the ladder at 40 feet. Nope, I quit that. In my 20s, I gave that up. Mm-hmm. I don't get on ladders at 40 feet anymore. Amen. Why? Because I get spooked up there. Is that a fear? Yes. Yes. Is that a good fear? Maybe, because. I get shook up and, and I get nervous, and the next thing you know, I'm sweating and I got to get off that ladder. <clears throat> so th- there's an example of a real life fear that paralyzes even big, big guys like me. So are, are there different kinds of fears? Yes. Mm. Is there is there the fear of God that we should have? Yes. Yes. Yes, there is, and it's not. Him beating you with a bat, it's you being struck by His greatness and humbling yourself before Him. Amen. And saying, you are all in all and you're all that I need. Amen. You're all that I need, Lord. I don't need anything else. Everything comes in you. Yes. My provision comes from you. Amen. My food comes from you. Mm. My strength comes from you my eyesight my hearing comes from you my heart beating comes from you lord you see as i and i could go on for an hour announcing things that he does that he rarely ever gets thanks for yes that has to change for us amen because if there's one thing you want to be known for and you want to be faithful to is be faithful unto death to be found a true worshiper before the Lord. And if you've got the fear backwards in your heart, you won't worship him freely. You'll be worshiping in fear. Don't let Satan trick you. That's not God. He loves you. And he showed it when he 
allow the son to pay your sin debt. That's, that's true. So if you're struggling with, oh, I didn't pray 47 times this morning. Mm. Uh, and I didn't make my bed this morning. And I forgot to clean the bathroom. I'm sure God's on his way to punish me. Mm. Wrong. so wrong he loves you because you're made in his image amen let that free you today yes he loves you because you're made in his image and the things that you should do you'll get around to them yes and the things that you (laughs) should be he's at work in you So don't give up on yourself and stop being so hard on yourself and stop fearing him out of the wrong box. Mm -hmm. You you have an awe of him because of who he is. Yes, amen, amen. There's no one like him. Mm -mm. Nobody can speak planets (laughs) into existence. No one has the power to turn... An entire generation of hearts off in one minute? Read the Bible. When the Assyrians came, 173,000 of them lost their lives in a moment. Wow. That's a lot of folk. (coughs) And so, these are just a couple of the kinds of fears that the Bible talks about. And can you believe I am completely out of time? I was just getting started. <laughs> That's not fair. That is not fair. This this poor this poor clock. Oh, oh boy. Amen. Yeah. Um. Let me talk just for a minute on how fear comes to us. Does it come on a train and you get on it? Or does the train run you over? Does it come through the ear gates? Can. Mm -hmm. Can it come at you through the eye gates? Mm -hmm. Can. So, I I think probably the, the essence of today's lesson is that we must understand that the true godly fear of the Lord is a good thing. It rewards you. The Bible says those that fear the Lord are, are given the secrets of God. Now let me read Malachi chapter 4 verse to you. Uh, chapter 4 verse 2 to you. It says, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go out and grow fat like stall-fed calves. And every every dietitian and every trainer just crawled underneath their pew. <laughs> but make no mistake about it. Physical exercise is good. Spiritual exercise is better. Amen. So here it says the promise is to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall shall rise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and grow. Now, saints, this is the promise of God. And that's a good kind of fear. Amen. It's when you revere the Lord because of who he is, and you serve him because you desire to. That's when worship begins. It's when you choose to respond to his greatness. At that moment, you've begun to worship. It's, it's, yeah, there, yes, there are things we can do that express our worship. If you look through the Old Testament, every place you find the word worship, you find someone on their knees. What does that mean? They're expressing humility and homage through their body to the Lord. They knelt down. They put their hands in front of them. 
Um, if you go to the Western Wall, you see them standing very reverently and bowing their head before God. And, and that's in, in some places you go into the, the houses of worship and you find people on their face with their nose in the carpet, pleading, worshiping, giving thanks. These all are expressions of humility and they display an awestruck heart. That's how you know you met someone that met the Lord is because their heart is so awestruck mm. that they they can't chase wrong anymore. Mm. And they take a stand against what's wrong. Amen. For you know, very visually. They they stand and stand up for what's right and just. That's how you know you, you've met someone that fears the Lord. So we've learned that walking in the fear of the Lord, the true uh, awestruck heart, has rewards. It has rewards. And as you can see here, it says the son of righteousness will, uh, shall arise with healing in his wings. Now, that's not just talking about a physical healing. God can heal your life financially. He, he, he can heal the way you think. Mm -hmm. He can change the way you think. Amen. He can give you new values and tear down old, old ways of stronghold thinking. You say, what is a stronghold? It's, it's a mind that will simply will not change. A fixed mind mm. that will not change, no matter what the devastation is or what the situation is no 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 it's like they're completely overcome to hear any kind of redirection or meditative thought or just think about this you know no i'm good that's a stronghold and and people get stuck in strongholds mm -hmm. And they cannot change, even when they reject the awestruck heart side of the relationship between a human and God. If you find someone that has no fear of the Lord, watch out. Mm -hmm. they, won't, they won't play in that water long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they'll either self-destruct or the Lord will discipline them. Mm -hmm. So these are... Um, some different types. If you if you look up, uh, you know, on the internet or in a library somewhere, the different types of phobias. There's hundreds. Fear of spiders. Uh, fear of lightning. Now, there's there are some things we should fear. Mm -hmm. You should fear fire. Oh yeah. Right. That isn't that a good fear. Mm -hmm. You should fear it. Mm -hmm. You should. Fear things that are hot. Why? Because they have power to burn you. Mm -hmm. uh, you should fear the laws of physics. Because if you violate them, you're going to lose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These are all good fears. But the bad fears are when you are paralyzed mm -hmm. by your thoughts and your body quits. It says you become like a frozen ice cube. You lose the ability to cry. You lose the ability to have joy. You lose the ability to smile. You lose the ability to laugh. Mm -hmm. it, now, these kinds of strongholds are not good. And God wants to bring them down in your life. If you've had so much trouble in your life, you can't cry, you can't laugh, you can't smile, mm -hmm. and you're in constant torment, that's from Satan. Yes. That is not from God. Amen. And we have the power to, re to reject that. Yes. You say, where's that in the Bible? It says, whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Amen. That word bind is referring to an agreement. It's like if two parties sign a contract, it's now binding. Mm -hmm. So the issue, the, uh, the real heart here, is whatsoever you agree with, well, I, re I disagree in Jesus' name with fear of men. God said, do not fear them. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
You have to believe that. Because He has more power than any man. Amen. And you belong to Him. And He can change circumstances and thoughts in people and, and give favor to you where there was none. Right? right? These kinds of different fears are very real and they come in through their, uh, your eye gates. We see things and we're... Now, if I walked in, if I walked into my house and there was a six foot eight black bear roaring at me, should I fear him? Yes, I should. I should give him the house and go outside. You can have it. <laughs> are you getting me? You see how how there are some things you should fear. Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm not saying. Don't fear everything. Fear what God says is what you should fear. Amen. And don't let the eyes of little faith keep you in a place of bondage. Mm -hmm. God is with you. He's present in you. And He loves you deeply. And He's compassionate. And He's forgiving. Yeah. And his mercy renews every morning. Every morning. Thank every you. morning. Thank you. His mercy is there for you. Thank you. So be encouraged, those of you that have been under self condemnation. Are you sure your condemnation of yourself is just? What does God say about it? Is it your condemnation? Is it, is it condemnation from Satan? And is it just? So the principle here that I'm trying to impart is you have to believe truth. And you have to reject lies. Amen. And you have the power to do that. And you should not allow things to overcome you or to seize you or to paralyze you that are unjust. Because God is bigger than your biggest fear. Yes. 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 Hear me? He's bigger than your biggest fear. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And don't yes, is. just lay down and roll over. No. Mm -mm. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Kneel down in a worshipful position and praise him. And let your requests be made known to your God. He said, you have not because you ask not. Amen. Don't be afraid to ask for the impossible. Mm. Do not be afraid to ask for the impossible. He's bigger than the impossible. Amen. Our God is great and he is to be feared. Awestruck heart. If you don't have it, pray for it. Yes. For years I prayed that. And here, I did. I come in the sanctuary and spend six, seven hours with my head on the floor and I knew how terrible of a man I was and I knew how hard-headed I was and I knew I did not have the true fear of God I pled with him and pled with him for hours on end and asked him to give that to me yes. and I got I, I believe by faith I got a little bit Amen. not as much as I believe I want but I believe I got a little bit <laughs> And it'll change your life, I can assure you. You will treat people differently. Your walk will be different. Your talk will be different. Your prayers will be different. Your goals in life will definitely change. And you'll just trust Him for everything. And you have to start with, yes, I believe that you are with me. Amen. You're not alone. Yes, Don't ever believe. think you're alone because you're not. Amen. The Holy Spirit's on the inside, and the Father is there, and so is the Son. So, you be encouraged. His love for you is bigger than your biggest problem, and and make sure you're not fearing things you shouldn't. Amen. Be free in Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Liberty. Thanks for letting me share.